for all verified facts. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the bell icon to get the latest updates. Hello and welcome. Financial liabilities of Indian households have dropped in uh, across the country. Uh, net financial savings of households are estimated to have improved to 7.6% of gross national disposable income in 2019-20, according to preliminary estimates published by the Reserve Bank of India in its annual report. Now, this means quite simply that people are saving more and borrowing less. Now, it might seem like this is a good sign uh, because obviously uh, people are being more careful and are not uh, uh, blowing up all their savings or their income, but it's also a cause of concern. Let's find out why. In, and I'm joined now by Madan Sabnavis, Chief Economist at Care Ratings. Madan, thank you very much for joining us. See, what you're saying is very interesting, and I would say it's more or less expected because uh, we're talking of uh, times when there is a lot of uncertainty. So uh, this was something which started even before uh, COVID. So we're really talking of uh, 1920. So this was a time when jobs were not being created at a commensurate rate with growth, which had already slowed down to 4.2%. So in this kind of an environment, what really happens is that people tend to save more than they spend. And we had also seen that uh, last year, for example, uh, the entire uh, story of consumer demand picking up in the, in the festival season, post-harvest season, that did not really happen, which means that people were preferring to uh, save the money. And the corollary was, of course, that you were uh, spending less. So what you're saying, yes, it's a good thing because people are saving more in financial instruments rather than putting it in gold because we had all those restrictions on gold. So people are not really invest, investing that much in gold. And mm -hmm. property was down, so real estate had its own problems. So therefore, people were investing more in financial assets. But since the major thing which has been driving the economy down today is low consumption, I think that it would be a matter of concern. And uh, that can be addressed only in case we're able to increase income, which can be done in case we create more jobs. So I think that's where the conundrum really lies. Right. Okay. right. okay, so we'll come to the income part. So what is that figure or what is that band uh, uh, after which things get worrisome? So at some point, obviously, it's good, as we've all agreed that people are saving. Uh, at another point, if they save too much, then obviously they're not buying things, which means uh, I cannot consume products and services and therefore help the people who are manufacturing those products or delivering those services. But there must be some band. What is the comfort zone for on both sides? No, see, typically the thing is that the difference between your savings and capital formation should not be more than 2%. Anything above 3% will be a problem from the point of view of investment. So we don't really have a specific number which can talk of savings. But today, normally when savings get converted to investment, I think it's a good sign. So if we had these high rate of savings, financial savings, which were being used by banks in order to uh, lend to people who are going to invest that would bring about growth, and I would not see any major problem out there because it would be growth which is being inspired by investment rather than consumption. But today we have a situation where banks had these funds, deposits growing, but the money was going more into government uh, securities. So therefore, it was a comfortable situation as far as the government is concerned, the banking system, RBI, everybody put together. But it did not help to bring about growth. Because growth comes from consumption and investment. And it has to be backed up by domestic savings or by foreign investment. Finally, what we talk of the current account deficit. So last year, we saw a current account deficit coming down, meaning our savings were high, domestic savings were high. Investment was also not happening. So therefore, it was a comfortable situation, but a very uncomfortable one. Right. So uh, in terms of uh, how much people are uh, actually saving uh, and what they are perhaps not saving because, let's say, they were buying gold and now they are not. So let me put it differently. So people were maybe saving in other kinds of assets that they are now either liquidating and moving into financial savings. That means if I had gold, I sold gold and I instead went and put it in my bank deposit, which obviously is uh, doesn't give me that much of return, but maybe I feel more secure. So if, if that is the case, then why should this have an impact on consumption? Because this is money that I'm only moving from one asset to another asset. No, actually, it's not that way, Gobin. The way I look at it is that, A, I have an income. B, there's a growth in this income. Now, my income is not being growing, and I'm not certain my con consumer confidence is lower. So, therefore, what do I really do is that I'd say, look, let me not spend money today. I'm not quite sure of the future tomorrow. So, therefore, let me put this additional income into savings. So, that's how I compromise on, on consumption. Because part of your consumption is also kind of savings. Because if I'm putting money in, say, a television set in an automobile, that would be analogous to saying it's, it's a saving. So having less physical savings, more of uh, financial savings, 
is typically the syndrome which we have when there's a lot of uncertainty in the economy, something which has gotten exacerbated in the current year thanks to the COVID. Right. Okay. So if you were to now uh, look a little ahead, uh, how does this uh, uh, this play out or how could this play out if, if uh, uh, financial savings remain high and people continue to spend less and how will it affect and can we quantify the impact on the consumption or on the manufacturing of products or the delivery of services? See, this kind of a thing is going to last for 2021. So I do not see any kind of change in this particular trend where people are going to continue to save more and save more in financial assets rather than in physical assets, which includes gold and other consumer durable goods. So this is something which is uh, 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 going to become deeper in this, in this particular year. And in terms of uh, Indian manufacturing, I think this is going to be a concern for them. Because unless we practice this entire puzzle of how do I create more jobs and increase overall income, which in improves the sentiment in the economy, only then will the households be in a position to say that, look, I'm going to consume more. So I think in terms of uh, India INC, I think they have to be more cautious in terms of what kind of projections you're making for this year. Because we have seen a number of uh, corporates, especially in the in the discretionary spending as well as in terms of AFMCG, actually saying that they are very sanguine about things turning around in this particular festival season, which I think may not really happen because of this particular trend which we are seeing, where people are going to continue to save more, and we've already seen bank deposits are growing, mutual funds are doing fairly well because stock market is doing well. Individuals are saying, okay, I don't go for bank deposit, let me go for a mutual fund, which is relatively. Uh, better than a deposit and relatively more safe, safer than investing directly in the stock market. But ultimately, it's going to affect overall consumption. And when we're talking of negative GDP growth this year, it is going to be fueled by a very high negative growth in consumption. Right. Uh, last question, uh, Madan. Any broad trends that you're seeing? So we've focused on one aspect, which is individual uh, borrowings and savings. Uh, uh, any other trends that you feel that link to this or will be an outcome of this? See, another thing which we've seen because of this conservatism which is there in the Indian household, uh, if you look at the overall level of borrowing also has come down. So earlier, it was a case of saying that uh, I would also continue to borrow in the market from the banking system. The reason being I want to buy a house, I want to buy a vehicle, I want, just want it for a marriage or whatever personal reasons it is. But today when we're seeing that uh, there's a lower growth in credit, and this is primarily because of your retail segments going down. Now, today we have a situation where your SMEs are actually getting funds. So there's some kind of positive momentum there. But if you're looking at other sectors, non-agriculture, non-SME sector, one is, of course, there's less demand coming from uh, the manufacturing sector. But if you look at the retail credit also, there's been definitely signs of a slowdown out here. Because individuals who don't have a job, who see having a lower income, are not going to get into borrowing money for consumption purposes. Right. Right. So I think this would also be adding to the fact that I, I'm not feeling secure, I would rather save. I don't want to borrow to buy something. Some things which were not there in the past when we had witnessed higher growth. So I think both these two engines are going to fire this year. Right. Uh, Madan Sabnavis, uh, Chief Economist at Care Ratings. Thank you so much for uh, joining us as always and sharing your insights.